I'm Katie Seipel. I'm a school social worker in the Birmingham School District and happy to be here to share a little bit about myself and what um, our team does in our district and some statistics. Uh, this first page here is just a little bit about me. Um, can I put that one that yeah. down? Um, on the left hand side, that's kind of where my work began um, in high school, starting to go on mission trips to Haiti. Um, met a little boy named Gavinson and started sponsoring him and uh, just created a special bond with that little boy. And I knew that my work was to help kids and help kids in poverty. And um, I thought my life would be graduate high school and move to Haiti and start an orphanage. But um, I decided to join the Navy, actually. Um, my recruiter sold it to me as, um, you know, you can do your humanitarian work and you can pull up on a ship and you get off and you do, you know, all the things that you like to do in Haiti. And um, I went in undesignated. If anyone knows what that means, it means you go in without a job. Um, and right from boot camp, about 10 weeks in the Navy, I got orders to Bahrain and I joined the USS Nimitz on deployment. They had already been out to sea for some time and I was handed a purple Jersey, which meant I was going to be a fueler, not something I knew much about or what I've signed up to be. Um, I essentially ran fuel bottles, samples of fuel up and down the stairs for six months, the rest of the deployment. That was my job. And, uh, it was pretty disheartening of, uh, <laughs> what my role was in the Navy, but, um, ultimately, you know, worked my way up and, um, ended up working for the, the top officer in my division and finished my four years and knew that that was my time it needed to end and get out um, and pursue my um, degree in social work. So I went to UW, got my bachelor's in social work, started working for the Coffee Oasis, which I um, I find a lot of pride in. I was the first uh, case manager and sole five-person team to start Coffee Oasis in Pierce County um, in 2019. So we were laying the groundwork. Obviously, Coffee Oasis has been in Kitsap County for a long time, but um, it was really grassroots to be in Pierce County, um, being a small team, opening up a youth shelter for the first time that was serving kids under 18. Um, it was really, really um, hard and awesome work. And I'm really proud of that work. Um, I'm actually the supervisor of the case manager now. Um, and so that's kind of cool to come back to that work to be aligned with Coffee Oasis down, still. Down, down there it's still. Pierce County. Yeah. Yeah. We okay. meet once a week um, via Zoom and talk about his caseload and stuff. So um, 2021 during COVID, I went back to school and got my master's in social work because um, I knew I wanted to be a school social worker and you have to have a certification and have to have your master's do that. So um, I am proud UW, go dogs. Um, <laughs> sorry if there's any coogs in the family. I heard you. I don't know. I just needed to put that in there. <laughs> and then, um, so this is year three of working at Armand Jar and um, primarily in the Bremerton School District. After I left Bremerton, I was like, I'm never coming back to Bremerton. And um, after being out of the Navy and then here, here I am back, back in Kitsap. And um, it's been a really awesome district to be a part of. That picture down there is me and my fiance, Christian. He's actually a football coach at the high school. So it's kind of cool to um, be cheering him on while he's, he's coaching. Yeah. Uh... How do you go next? I'll just click. Okay, there we go. Um, so in 2021, the district decided to hire four of us um, to use the post-COVID ESSER funds to support students and families um, coming back from COVID and re-engaging students um, after being online, which we know is um, still a barrier today. Um, the, the mission that we came up with and we created kind of like what our job description was going to be, um, laying the, the roots of um, what a social worker is in the Bremerton School District because it's never been done before. Um, so really, we're 
we're coming alongside the school counselor and kind of extending their services, whereas the school counselor meets with students um, one on one and obviously meets with students as well. But our role kind of extends more of like, how can we help to bridge the gap between home and school? Um, going on home visits, I often go to houses um, with another person. Um, knocking on the door and saying, hey, like, we miss you. Why are you coming to school? And try to figure out the barriers of, um, you know, why students are um, unenrolled or not attending school. And then obviously these are a few different things that we provide. I also meet with students one-on-one -on -one and really meet with the students that are um, experiencing the most trauma or have um, and foster care and such like that. Um, this fun picture, we are team minus one person was not in this picture. We just went to um, New Orleans and had a great time for a conference. So they probably would not like that. I put a picture on our slides, but it's um, it's fun. Um, so I, there I am on the left. Um, I'm mostly at Armanjar, but my other school is View Ridge Elementary. I support them with um, some bigger cases or families in crisis. Uh, Roberta, who's not pictured, she's at West Hills primarily, and she supports Naval. Jessica next to me is at Mountain View, and then um, she supports Crown Hill as necessary. Brigitte, who's all the way to the right in the hood, um, she's at Bremerton High School. She's new to our team this year. And then Becca next to her is at Renaissance High School primarily, and she supports Gets Up Lake. Um, our roles look kind of different um, depending on our schools. Um, the elementary, um, I mean, all of us, we're, we're there to engage students, right? Um, we know that kids who feel like they belong to a community want to come to school. Um, we know relationships drive everything. If they have one supportive person in their corner, I mean, that is huge for, especially for a kid that doesn't have that at home. Um, and academic behavior success. Uh, we see trauma in the classrooms looking like behaviors that can be challenging to deal with or unengaged in their work. And so trying to help kids and teachers um, come up with a plan to help them be successful is really a huge part of our job. Um, and tendence improvement, like I said, work to understand and remove barriers. Um, meet with them, meet with their family, come up with a plan, some like elementary school age, we do like sticker charts. And like, once you, you know, I'm not going to start with a kid that's not coming to school and have a plan or goal to go five days, you know, we might start with three and we have a special lunch together and celebrate. And then, you know, as that becomes easier, then we add another day. Um, so that's what I do with kids that, um, that attendance is a struggle and coming back from COVID. I mean, we have, I have a fourth grader right now that hasn't been to school since before winter break, um, you know, and coming to go into her house and knocking on the door and, you know, asking like what's going on. Um, her particular situation is depression and anxiety and just not wanting to get out of bed. And so that's, I mean, our elementary school kids are struggling with mental health just as much as um, middle school and high school kids. Um, and then engage with the families. Like I said, I mean, we're blessed to have like work cell phones. So I text a lot with parents um, to check in. Um, the family that I sent out with the needs, they were living in a shelter for a year. I've been working with that family for three years now to see them get a house. But to be able to text, you know, she's like, you know, I need a vacuum. And then I'm able to text community partners like I'm looking for a vacuum or send out an email um, that family, their whole house has been furnished because of community partners. So it's incredible. Um, and like I said, community partnerships, that is huge. And to know like the events that are happening in the community and then getting that out, creating flyers um, for the different um, churches and places in the community that are doing uh, free food during the week. That's something that I work on constantly. Um during holidays, that's huge. Coming up with a flyer of all the places you can get free meals for Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, toys, toys for tots, um, all of those things. That's that's a huge part of um, my role. 
So the McKinney-Vento Act is a state and federal law that protects and provides support for children and youth who lack fixed, regular, and adequate housing. My next slide goes over what that is listed for McKinney-Vento, the difference between those things. Um, so it's really our job. When a, when a family comes in, they do an enrollment package with the district or the school, um, and there's a housing questionnaire that's in that package. Um, that's how we find out some of our families that would qualify for McKinney Vento, um, where they list like they're living with a friend or they are living in a shelter, they're living in their car. Um, usually the enrollment secretary gives me that <laughs> housing questionnaire and then I follow up with the family um, and just say, you know, you marked this on your intake. Um, can Do you feel comfortable talking about that? Do you um, want to share more information with me so we can get you enrolled in this um, federal law that protects you because we know that families that are living in transition or that are highly mobile um, are going to move around a lot. And the best thing that we can do for our kids is to keep them at a, a school um, that's stationary where they're not moving from school to school. Um, right now, I have kids that are in the foster care system that are being bused all the way from Parkland to Armanjar because school is so important for them. That's where they have connection. Um, I have lunch with one of those girls every day. I'm her person. And I know that like, that's not a, that's not a permanent place for them right now. And so I'm advocating for them to stay at our school and McKinney Vento, the funds um, provide that transportation for those girls to stay at our school. So that's like one of the biggest um, ways that McKinney Vento protects family is to keep them, um, at the school of origin you have a question that's a big change because i remember that it was still distressing for me when i was thinking that these kids all of a sudden disappear you know you have a real relationship with them yeah. yeah that's why it's really important for us to identify the families um i just did a training with all the teachers it's like if you know that families are doubling up sometimes culturally that's what's that's what's normal for them and yet it's maybe not a permanent place. And so if we can identify them to protect them to stay, um, that helps us a lot and the kids to make sure that we maintain the same school. Foster kids especially, it was so distressing to me. Yeah, have to pick up a move and go to different places. Yeah. And when you say that kids stay at the school, do you mean physically live in the school or do you mean yeah, have a foster home or something close by the school so they can stay in the same district? Yes, I mean, um, stay at the same district, stay at okay. the same school of origin where they're currently attending. We want to make sure that kids that are moving around don't have to move schools as well, that that stays as a stable grounding place for them as they're in transition. Thank you. Yeah. So McKinney-Vento, um, the difference between fixed would be like if a family's living in an RV, um, it's not something that's moving around often, like they're typically parked somewhere, um, but it is um, the their location could possibly change. So that would be a fixed um, residence. Uh, regular would be somewhere that they're sleeping on a regular basis. So that could be couch surfing or living in someone's, you know, living room. Um, that's a, a regular place they're staying, but it's not a permanent residency. Um, and then adequate would be, we have some families that are living in some really um, rough conditions where they don't have hot running water or um, a kitchen that's operating for them to make food. Um, Yes, it's a place that they're laying their head regularly. Um, it's a home, but it's not an, an adequate basic needs are being met. Um, and then you'll see the HUD definitions are um, are listed there as well. And we've had you know many families use the uh, domestic violence shelter in the area. Um, and then the shelters, yeah, I mean, the stay is only so long, so they're constantly moving. Um, so these are some of the things that are listed when we're doing the enrollments with with families. And I starred sharing housing due to loss of housing, economic hardship, or similar reason. That's probably our biggest um, 
way that we identify families is is um, doubling up or um, couch surfing. Um, we have had quite a bit of families living in shelters this year um, and a family living in a tent for quite some time. I had a family living behind Burger King and I was going to Burger King and picking up those students, um, to take them to school uh, the first month of this school year. Um, they were living in a tent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are some statistics for the district as a whole. Um, this data is from right before winter break in December. Um, one out of the classroom of 20 would be considered McKinney-Vento or homeless, lacking housing stability. One of 20. One out of 20. Oh, okay, one out of 20. Mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then this is a historical trend um, just to see the, the years and how the spike post-COVID really has continued to go up. Um, and I, th I think also there's so many families that we're also not identifying, right? So I think it's actually even higher. Um, especially Armanjar is, we're a dual language school. We have a lot of families that are um, migrant from Guatemala, uh, Mexico. Um, I mean, we've had so many families from different places this year. We're having families come and go constantly. Um, and so sometimes they're only with us for such a short period of time. We don't know their full story. So that's why it's so important just for our teachers and for all of our staff to really get to know our family so we understand the need. Um, and this is the different categories that we'd see um, marked on the McKinney-Vento intake. Um, like I said, doubling up is about half. And by that, you mean there would be more than one family in a, mm -hmm. in a dwelling of mm -hmm. some sort. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to an apartment where there's like nine people living in a one bedroom. Yeah. And there's just kids just lay on the ground. So, is it unaccompanied? so that's our youth that are, um, without an adult or guardian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just living with a friend, living at Coffee Oasis. Um, we've had a high schooler living in a tent this year um, by herself. Yeah. So that's like our high schoolers. Um, these are the needs that are part of the intake that we do for the McKinney-Vento paperwork. Um, that we ask families what they need. Um, the star is where we really count on our community partnerships to to help with those services connecting to housing. I mean, I'll they say they need housing, and I'll check that, and it's like that paperwork goes to the district, and it's like, okay, that's good. I, it's a statistic, right? And so it's up to really me. <laughs> It, when it goes to the district office, nobody's really following up with that family to um, say, you know, how can we get you housing? Because it really is out of our scope, right? We're, we're a school district. So it's really important for us as liaisons when we're doing the intake with the families to give them the resources in the community. You know, have you met with a housing um, specialist at Kitsap Community Resources? You know, wh what are your next steps to to get permanent housing? Um. And then, um, like I said, transportation is that other really big one um, that our district, I think, spends most of our funds on is to ensure transportation for kids that are constantly moving around to keep them at the school of origin. And these would be the McKinney Vento mm -hmm. funds when yep. you say spend, yeah, those yep. are the, yeah, the federal state funds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions so far? Is, is that money? Um constant i mean it's not like gonna go away because no but it is based on how many kids how many families we're identifying as mckinney vento so it is important for us to to identify as many so we can have the funds to um to support them and 
at the district office, I can request like $50 per kid per McKinney Vento for like specific needs. It needs to be related to how they word it. It's like needs to be related to getting, supporting them to get to school. But if new shoes are that thing, then we can spend $50 on that. Um, but it really is meant to, to help bridge the gap between home and school. And before in school, uh, before after school, child care can also be one of those things. The family, there's nobody to watch the kid. Um, right at school is at our arm and jar before school. That's something that McKinney Vento funds can be paid for to bridge that gap. Does, mm -hmm. Yes. Does arm and jar have before and after care at the school? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay, can I ask you, oh, excuse me. I was going to ask about how you determine. Who gets to transport these kids? How that works? Yeah. So the district office, uh, transportation department, does handle those requests. Um, sometimes it's a uh, special education bus that has specific routes that they go pick up from kids, like houses, directly at the front door. Um, they also use like van services. Um, they have some specific like. Uh, avenues or people systems that they use yeah no no yep it's different services that they use yeah and you had a question it sounds like you have a fair amount of latitude as a social worker mm -hmm. in the school district mm -hmm. i was wondering given all the various things you do do you find any um any instances where you're not uh don't have you fit the, the uh, ability to go do X, Y, or Z and wish you could? Or do you feel like you're the latitude you have pretty much? You know, allows yeah. You to do I think um, home visits, like, like the the good law is you always have someone to go with you. You never go by yourself. Um, I've definitely done things that I probably shouldn't have um like picking up the kids that were living behind Burger King like I just was swinging by there on my way to work and getting them because I knew they wouldn't be coming to school uh and if I needed to ask for forgiveness later I would um I think that kind of thing is something that other social workers might have not been doing um I think getting them to appointments in the community, like mental or yeah, mental health or medical dental, you know, that's kind of out of our scope. We kind of rely on the family to do that. I wish I, I have been to one appointment with a kid at Peninsula Health Clinic. I took her, um, her family didn't speak English. She had stomach issues for over two years. I'm like, this kid needs to see a doctor. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, our scope can be kind of limited to like the school, whereas um, I don't know, I'm just used to like going out and doing it. And sometimes I, yeah, I, yeah, I would ask for forgiveness in the long run. <laughs> yeah. So the, <clears throat> the clinics, the clinic that is mm -hmm. available at the high school level. And middle school. We have one at the middle school too, yeah. cannot be used for elementary. It can. it can. Yep. Yep. And we also, we do have some paperwork that um, we can get the family to give release of medical information and to allow us to transport them to the clinic. And I've done that before. Um, so there's a packet for that. Um, but that would be another staff member yeah. going with you and taking them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Maybe you talk about this later, but I see a little circle on tutoring and do you have a volunteer <laughs> program? So I volunteer for the AVID program. They have a very oh, yeah. robust mentoring, tutoring. They, is there something specific for the homeless kids? Or I know I volunteered years ago for foster kids uh, tutoring. Mm -hmm. And that program is like disappeared. <laughs> I would there. say there's really nothing going on with tutoring right now in elementary sphere. I don't know what's happening at the middle school and high school. Um, yeah, it's listed as one of the check boxes, isn't it? Um, but some of the things I feel like we are checking off and it's like, and then what, you know? And that's something that I... Uh, so the after school program then is 
recreational or... right at school they're not yeah it's just it's it's recreational boys and girls club however um and i will talk about them as being a community partner they have a program called 21 century um, funding where they have got funding for Armanjar students to go to boys and girls club um because of our title one service you know status um to cover the funds for kids to go to after school that's only after school program um they pride themselves in having 45 minutes of power hour at the beginning of boys and girls club while the kids are there um when i ask the kids i don't know if what's tutoring is happening during that time but i think that's what the time is designed to do is to help academic um success the next Plusing. Mm -hmm. Do you have days when if you have after school programs, mm -hmm. are those specific days so that the kids can catch buses home? We have a no, 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 no. Parents have to pick them up. Yeah. Which is also, yeah, it limit it limits, right? Yes. Of who yes. we're serving. Um, we have a bus that goes from Armanjar to Boys and Girls Club across the street, but parents have to pick up by 6 p.m. The program does feed them dinner, which is awesome. Um, and boys some and of those club or the or the main the regular after school. boys and girls club. Okay. Yep. So really, that design that program is designed to really serve our families that are are most impacted by housing insecurity. Is that the full population that's going right now? Somewhat. You know, we could do better, but I think yeah. To your point if it takes for the families to have to come pick them up, then we're, we're limiting who can. The girls club is, is over where the junior high used to be. Is that where it is? Um, yes. Yes. East gym. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, I haven't been in Vermont. I'm originally from Florida. I guess I didn't tell you that, but yeah. So uh, again, before school, they'd have to provide transportation to get them to the before school program is that correct that's the both ends yeah yeah okay. although I have had a family in foster care that we've provided transportation get to school before um and have access to right at school before school care I have had that happen but that was me really fighting for that to happen um so there's availability Yes. Um, you said at the very beginning that, um, at least that is how I heard it, that your funding was um, provided by the federal government as mm -hmm. a way to um, get kids back on track after, mm -hmm. after COVID. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me the federal government's um, one of their things would have been academic, tutoring and academic mm -hmm. recovery. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like and, and I don't know if that if they're still being funded that way, but it sounds like that basically you have other needs, just getting kids to school, and, and oh yeah, rather than I mean, so. Um, do you have to show tutoring in order to continue to get that money, or are you still being funded that way? Or um, I know the ESSER funds post COVID that was that was um, funding the social work. Um, team our positions i don't i think that money has run out 2023 i think is when it ran out um, yeah it's a big question mark and see if our our positions even how what's the longevity of them i don't know you know i know that it's important for us to collect data and prove you know all the things that we're doing and show at the end of the day, that's how you you keep your position. So um, that's state, what. There would be state funding too, for the academic recovery and for these sort of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, think I they just uh, I read into this morning's Times that they added um, money for special ed uh, mm -hmm. more fully fund mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. At the state but, level. Yes, uh -huh, and I can't uh -huh. remember now exactly how it was uh -huh. worked, but they were moving, uh, they just raised a percentage of the money that was going to go for that, but it, there was nothing about social services. Social services right. in, in that particular uh, 
Yeah. A little snippet. Tutoring is needed. <laughs> so, um, if it were to say this, we're working with students and sometimes maybe their parents are dealing with addiction or mental health issues and they have their own services, mm -hmm. social workers or mm -hmm. caseworkers. Mm -hmm. Is it, are you, are you work just kind of dealing with the kids specifically or how does that, is there cross work that happens? I'm sure if I, it depends. Privacy? Yeah. Yeah. And it depends like what the family is willing to share um, my relationship with them. I have had uh, the caseworker at KCR and I have a Zoom conference about the family living in a tent. You know, what's the next steps for them to get housing? How can we get the kids to school? Um, I think my my primary focus is the kids, but ultimately the family's stability. So um and child protective services. I work really closely with um, the caseworkers that, um, you know, when our kids are in foster care, we have meetings once a month when a kid is in foster care um, as a best interest placement meeting to talk about like our kids in Parkland, you know, we come together, the school, the social worker and the foster parent and say, what's best for these kids? Do they continue to stay at our school or is this a long-term placement and um, do they need to move to a closer school so they're not spending an hour on the bus. Um, so I definitely work alongside agencies um, as much as possible, as much as people allow me to, definitely. And then one other question. So is this sort of program unique to the Bremerton School District or other school systems within Kitsap County even doing something similar? Um, I think South Kitsap has a few social workers. Um, not really a hundred percent sure. I came from the Fife School District before here, um, and they had one for the whole district. Mm -hmm. So they were based at the district office, and then they kind of supported as needed at every school. Um, I really hope to envision that there's. Um, a social worker at the district office that oversees the social workers at the schools because the amount of work that we do to organize events or um, like the Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that stuff takes so much time where when you're based in a school like at Armajar, like my day can be just taken from me because I'm supporting students and I'm you know, I'm just supporting the school, but then there's all this other work of community partnership um, and things, opportunities like this uh, to be in our communities to really talk about the need and then how can we get people alongside us. So I hope as I'm working towards my license, um, I hope to oversee a team and kind of be at the top of the, the team so we can do more. Yeah. Um, but every district is different. And I think it's a new growing, hopefully, um, avenue for schools because I think it's super important. All right. Um, different um, areas contributing to um, our, our challenge with homeless instability. Um, the two largest barriers, I think, um, shelters are short-term stays for families, right? Um, they're continuing to have to move. And then um, capacity of social services, um, the mental health challenges um, students and families face, um, the trauma. Um, we do have a Kitsap, a Kitsap mental health therapist at our school two days a week. Um, so she has a caseload of 16. She's always full. I always have more kids to give her. Um, so the, we have a lot of mental health needs and not enough supports. So I think that's huge as well. Um, are there KMH, KMH people at other schools in Bremerton? Yes. Um, there's a, I think at, um, not all elementary schools, but the high school for sure. And the high school also has a substance use disorder counselor mm -hmm. that talks to kids about um, substance abuse. Um, and then Renaissance High School has a KMH therapist there often. Um, there's a new collaborative. It's called CCST. It's a clinical collaborative support team. Um, this funding came to KMH 
to do, has anyone heard of WISE team? A WISE team is a wraparound intensive service team. Um, so KMH, the top kids that need the most support, um, a, a WISE team is consisted of a therapist, uh, a um, care coordinator who like makes appointments and then a parent partner typically. Um, and they made a school-based program out of this um, funding. And we have five families that we can refer throughout our whole district. Um, so um, these are our kids that need the most support. So the family, the, the team goes to them at home and they also come to them at school. Um, they're also serving North Kitsap, Central Kitsap, and South Kitsap. And five, yep, because they have all these other districts they have to serve as well. So um, I'm the lead on our team to take um, referrals for the kids that, um, you know, we think would be most fitting for this, this program. Um, they only work with the family. The goal is to work with them for, um, I think, 18 weeks and then kind of get them to more long-term programs. But um the family that was living in the tent for Burger King, like they were a good quick candidate for that team because um, that team really helped them gain housing. Um, they could take them to appointments at KCR where again, like my, my hands are a little tied on getting them to those appointments. Um, and then the therapist was coming to see the kids at the school um, and really bridging that gap um, and lessening the load off of me essentially and and being more at home and then coming to the school it's a wraparound intensive program services that's, yeah is that specific to kids at mental health yep and then um catholic community services also has wise teams as well um, and then the school-based program is called CCST, the Clinical Collaboration Support Team. Yeah. So, so the priority is the, the students who are having the most, most challenges mm -hmm. with housing instability, absences. Um, we know they need therapy. We know the family needs help at home. Um, those are our families. And of course we have, it's always full. When someone exits, we got another one to get in. Um, these statistics were really interesting to look at. Um, you know, our, our, um, our counts for point in time um, in January this year to 2023, um, 754 was counted for children for the the school year um 754 and then that was I looked at the stats for 2021 2022 it was 575 and then the previous year was 414 so that was pretty alarming and I was like yeah I can see that so that's from um Kitsap County Department of Human Services website So um, I see I'm fixated on eviction mm -hmm. and I see it says 40% are homeless as a result of eviction. And so would Kitsap County Department of Human Services be someplace you go to find out about what it means, what eviction means in Kitsap County? Would they be a source? They could be. I have not. I have not met with them. Um, does anyone go to the Kitsap Collaborator uh, Coalition meetings that happen on Wednesdays once a month? I have no. an email from them. <laughs> yeah, we always have training on that same Wednesday. We always have training, and um, it's a meeting that I want to. I want our team to be involved in because it's essentially a a place for all of the so social services to come together and say, 
you know, when there's, I used to go to the Pierce County one, and it's like when there's more new funding coming down the pipeline, this program's coming in, you know, six months, like that's where you're going to hear about it is at those meetings. Um, and so I, that's something that our team has not been very involved in, but I think is really important to make a priority, which we just need to take turns and somebody misses our training on Wednesday because that's important. <laughs> the, the Kids Have Coalition um, hosted by one of the agencies each time. Yeah, but it's on Zoom yeah, at 2 yeah, p.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll they have a different that, agenda. You know, with you because you have to um, register, I believe. I read the mm -hmm. small print. Um, the only thing for us, uh, if we attend meetings, we attend as individuals. Mm -hmm. We don't represent the league. Mm -hmm. We don't speak for the league, but we can certainly share, come back and share what we learn. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll send that. Well, I can show you before. Yeah. You did it like observer for, I guess you could attend as the lead, yeah. but you're not allowed to speak. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the very the, the difference there. And then just write up a non-biased, <laughs> an unbiased, I mean, report. Um, I went to a training a couple months ago and I saw this picture and I just was like, yeah, uh, absences are the tip of the iceberg and there's so much more to learn underneath that um, about what's going on with the kid, what's going on with the family. Um, and that's really, I think, our role in itself, like right there is like, what is underneath the water that maybe someone's not seeing or how can we, how can we discover what's going on? So that's been a, with the new uh, superintendent, it seems like that's one of their main focuses. It is. Yes. Yes. He is very driven um, to, if you're not present, then you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're not working towards your academic success and what, what you could be. And our team has met with him once. And I think we have some more work to do and sharing really what, what our role looks like on a day to day. So he understands um, the need and and that our positions really matter going forward. You just think back again, the left bottom. <laughs> oh, heads. Yeah. It was my zooming <laughs> in. Heads. Yeah. <laughs> and this is another thing I had gotten from my conference. I just was, thought it was super powerful. Um, we think of traumatic challenges, situations that people, kids, families go through. It's, you know, changing them for the worse. And, you know, oftentimes trauma does come with a lot of um, negative impacts, but we also know that um, through challenge, we can really blossom. And I think that's the power of relationships and, and knowing kids and knowing families and, and seeing them grow from the challenge or the struggle. Um, I think of that mom with four kids, you know, living in a shelter for over a year. She was fleeing domestic violence. She came from Texas, was in my office for the first three days. She was in Washington, just like distraught, um, getting her in a shelter, working with the family, um, getting them counseling, getting them that wraparound support team, um, that changed their life. And they're now in a home. She's employed. Um, the kids are attending school. They're successful. Um, yeah, just really powerful. So it's really awesome to be a part of um, seeing that change and growth in families. Um, this is my school. Um, that closet is a sad picture. I really wish I was looking. <laughs> I was like, I haven't took a picture of my food pantry in a long time. That does not look really, but I do have coats still hanging in the closet. And then I have food um, where families can come shop um, to supplement groceries, mostly canned and boxed items, but nevertheless, um, it's a place that they can come get things. Um, I have shoes that are flying off the shelves all the time, socks, underwear, um, and then I have sweatpants and then shirts, shorts, pants, all the things. Um, and gloves and hats are a big one when it gets cold. 
um, and coats. Um, yeah, I mean, over probably give over a hundred coats a year. Easy. Um, and then the sweats. Little kids have accidents, so we go through a lot of sweats. You <laughs> wish like they would bring them back sometimes. It's like, you know, stuff's not free. I always say I'm not I'm not a shoe department, you know, your shoes are wet. I'm really sorry. I wish you well. Like we're gonna be all right. Um, no, you can't get new shoes. So um donations are always welcome. Um, to touch on some computing community partnerships. Um, that was a really cool opportunity. Miss Washington came and talked to my fourth and fifth grade girls, mm -hmm. um, and really talked about body image and, um, her story. And that was a really cool opportunity. So sometimes I get emails for different people to come speak. Um, the picture up in the right hand corner was me at Sylvan Way Baptist Church, the youth group, um, last um last christmas i uh, raised over 500 dollars for our families for christmas gifts which that was a really cool um thing to to go talk to their youth group and sylvan way baptist church is really close to arm and jar and they help tremendously with any and every need that we have um i just email them um specific people in the community and the um, congregation and they just furnish that that mom's home completely four beds couches um, dining room table new washer and dryer everything um, really came from Sylvan Way community um, backpack brigade that is a huge source of partnership for our district um, I emailed her asking for numbers Currently, they serve 236 families, which is approximately 600 kids under the age of 18 per week, which is about 2,000 pounds of fruit food per week. Stand up brigades? Nope. Uh, backpack brigade. Are they um, at Bremerton or kids at Wild? Um, just back at uh, Bremerton. Yep. They only serve Bremerton. And they only serve um, elementary um, stand up for kids does food backpacks for a middle school and high school. Um, and then that was a 50% increase from last year, she said. So the numbers have gone up tremendously. Um, and at AJ, we receive about 80 backpacks per week. We're the highest of all elementary schools, 80. Does that relate to the housing situation? I think so. Mm -hmm. The poverty level, yeah. Title one school, right? Yeah. yeah. So we are the the highest need of elementary schools. Armager. The bond and passed. Yes, it did. <laughs> the levy passed. Yes. Yes. Yes, and we're in Yeah. Um. Let's see. Yeah. Right. It was you answered that one. It's good. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, I already talked about Boys and Girls Club. They fund our 21 first 21 century program, the free after school care for our school. Um, Peninsula Community Health Services. They have a location at the high school and the middle school. Um, I got New Day Ministry. I don't know if anyone knows Dave, but Dave is a, a warrior. Um, he has a new location across the street from Sylvan Way Library. Um, it's the old, I think it's, it's the white building. It's the old WorkSource building, I believe. Um, he does meals twice a week for families, um, hot meals. He has a clothing closet. He's got a food pantry. Um, he helped us a lot with Christmas. Um, He's a he's a guy that I call often. Um, New Day Ministries. His name's Dave Stewart. S T U or S T E W? S T E W A R T Stewart. Yes. So I wanted to get three story building. It's the big white yeah. building. Yep. Yes, he used to be years ago. Yep. Dave Stewart. Dave Stewart. Yep. If we like it specifically today, I mean, like, yeah, I think we all do we go through our stuff. And I yeah. think going to like St. Ben's and like in this one place, take it out on what they do with it. But yeah. if we wanted to get more specifically to some of these groups, is there mm -hmm. a place we can go and see specific 
needs. So I'd rather give things yeah. directly to whoever needs it than to some. Yeah, I don't know if there's like a platform that's we should have one. I typically just send out emails to people that I know that I, you know, he's one of them. Um, or just calling him or me emailing, you know, I have this, I have a bed that I need, I'm getting rid of, you know, do you have anyone that can I use it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah. just things like backpacks, sometimes we, I, we end up with like free stuff or, you know, yeah. I'd rather give it specifically to, or maybe they'd rather just have cash. No, Bremerton Backpack Brigade is always um, collecting backpacks. Um, that's the biggest barrier I think is like, so backpacks go home on Fridays and then I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to collect them back from kids. So they have to bring them back to me mm -hmm. and then they go, then they, someone comes and picks them up and every week, you know, kids continue to not bring backpacks back, you know, I know. I so. Doing it. They have, just because of that, they're, they have a staff that go out anywhere every week because the kids are so, mm -hmm. I'm thinking you shop and you see something real killer deals on sale that might mm -hmm. be used specifically with mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have one like central location oh, where, like, yeah. You have certain things that you want to. Mm -hmm. And I would assume your colleagues have something similar to your closet. Everybody's home. Maybe not everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could. It could. Yeah. yeah. Some people do. Um, so also a genie who runs um the oh no, I should put that on here. It's a clothing closet. She runs it out of her house. It's by the high school. Um, New Beginnings. Yeah, New Beginnings Clothing Closet. That's a huge resource. I'll text her and say, I need 60 or I, you know, I give her a list and then she's like, Great, all volunteers put it in a bag and it'll be ready for you tomorrow. I'll swing by and she send it back for me. Like, so she's a great resource for clothing shoes. And then Girls on the Run is so much fun. Um, that's an awesome program that we have in the spring um, for girls, third, fourth, and fifth grade girls. Um, and we train for a 5K. And I'm a proud coach of that team because it's really cool to see our girls be working towards a goal. And then when we run the 5k at the, um, at the fairgrounds, like I had one girl just like, I, I thought I could never do that. You know, it's just one of those times I feel like they'll remember that they set a goal and they achieved it. And to feel that proud that you can cross the finish line, like it's huge. So is that across the district or through fifth or just Arm and John? Um, I think we might be the only elementary school that does it at our, in Bremerton. Yeah, it's all about coaches, you know, you got to get teachers to stay after school and yeah, it's all volunteer based. So, um, but they, they have many, many districts, hundreds of, of thousands of people come for that event in May. Where is it? Um, it's at the, um, the kids at fairgrounds. Oh, well, you said that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. What's it called? Um, Girls on the Run. Girls on the Run. Yep. It's a nonprofit. Um, you can donate tennis shoes. All the girls get brand new tennis shoes. Um, and they'll provide like leggings if needed or yeah. Um, this is a huge production that's three years in a row. Um, through donors, one lady gives over a thousand dollars for me to go shop at SARS for turkeys and hams and pies and all the fixings. Um, so the last three years have been a huge success for to feed our families for Thanksgiving. Um, and then during that event, I, I have a table of Chromebooks out with teachers who can speak mom in Spanish and they meet with families and get them signed up for Toys for Tots. So um, Toys for Tots is a huge, um, huge resource that we use for, um, for Christmas, but that's a great opportunity for them to sign up while they're getting Thanksgiving meals. Aww. Are you aware of the program that was specifically for teens? They used to do the kids ones, and that's fine, kids. But I was thinking, okay, hey, sure, see what they can walk in this shop on. Yeah. And then the Christmas program for teens. Are you aware of that? I don't remember. No, but every year, like we, uh, I know, like the social worker at the middle school and the high school, like collecting all the places you can go or sign up 
for for toys for for all ages um and new day ministry was was hitting kind of some of the teen ages as well that i was referring him to families that i knew like didn't really fit the toys for dots yeah um but always more to add sounds like you do 80 hour weeks (laughs) katie there's a lot to do and i that's why i feel like if we had somebody at the the district level that we could really focus on um making our our collaboration with community partners stronger um to every season you know come up with what you know what's the current times and days of food you know food banks hot meals in the in the county you know things are always changing and that just takes time to research and create flyers and um those are not just the right to the same time yeah yeah <laughs> i know or for people like us that want to donate money or time or items like mm-hmm. it's overwhelming or i see things and i forget where it was and like said so then you end up doing something easy like goodwill which i don't i'd rather not yeah but yeah yeah and I think we need a central place where we can put needs out because I think the five of us are on the, you know, boots on the ground working with families and we know all the needs, but to put it in one place for then community members to respond to that need, it's, that's, yeah, something I can talk to our group about. Maybe something from schools, you know, on their website. Yeah. Yeah, but I agree with you. Yeah. That or maybe yeah. there's a place, you know, there's like people want to give away things free, like free, what is this free places? But I'd uh-huh. rather like someplace where I can say, I have two twin mattresses and a trundle bed that I want to give to somebody who needs it. Yes. Not just give it away, but the place where you can go and post something like that. Or, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And that's something that I can talk to our team about. We can maybe even just start with us and then include like Dave on there. And the director, the new director of uh, Bremerton Food Line, Mm -hmm. uh, we were next to her at the resources day that they had at St. Vincent the Falls. Salvation Army. The Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Last month, this month, anyway. She's been tasked with trying because she feels like they are a first responder. People come in, they have a need, and she wants to get involved in that. So that's, I think Amy knows something about that. Yeah, I mean, and she's asking for the same thing. Right. So, yeah. Their, you know, purpose is to aim the food thing for people, and they do that pretty well. But people are coming in, it's often the first thing. People are doing. They're yeah. food insecure. Yeah. And there are a lot of other things going on. Yeah. And housing is one. There yeah. Could be a lot of things. Depression. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, they're beginning to get trained so that they can respond to all that, but the figuring out what the resources are and not just like long term, but mm-hmm. who is somebody I can call right now because they have a need, mm-hmm. they're going to keep without a jacket, what, mm-hmm. whatever. So, so she was saying the same thing. There are some centralized databases that are more national and statewide and even county, but I think her struggle with that is a lot of the, the numbers are out of date, the people listed, are, or there aren't names yeah. listed, that sort of thing. So, you know, like you have your go-to people, she's looking for that also. So, okay. So you're not maybe the only I... organization of Robertson who's starting yeah. to and maybe we could connect with her. She yeah. is very enthusiastic. She okay. has a fresh outlook. Okay. Because we had couldn't get much response from Food Line. We okay. invited people to come and talk to us, and they you can send you her. Couldn't okay. even get in touch with us and weren't interested. But this lady is, um, she she is a, Jessica. Got a new um, vision. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of exciting, but also overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's raising five boys. Yeah, I've got her email address. I'll send it to Kate. Yeah. Jess, Jess, she goes by Jess or Jessica. Question better. <laughs> Foster care, I said I was a little bit involved in it. I said some family and issues. So it, and I'm just appalled that statistics for foster children are appalling. It's all, I mean, it's awful. 
you know, then they turn 18 and boom, they don't have, you know, I'm just, because that, it's a big kick you out. Mm -hmm. age out. And there's lots of programs, at least at the time that I was involved in this, like they could get their college free, but they mm -hmm. hadn't yet accepted into a college. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there still, is there any, is there a, another place for dealing with foster kids or how we can support foster families? Um, I think, um, I'm blanking on the name. Is it Olive Crest or is that Pierce County? Um, Olive Crest does with, works with foster families. Um, there's another organization that I can look up in a second. Um, that does really good work with foster families and. Um, Amy, aren't you a mentor? I'll have to look up the the organization I'm thinking of that's not coming to me, but the transitional housing that's about to open, well, mm -hmm. it's going to open at the end of this year is for foster, for kids that are aging out of the system, which is exciting. I have another question, but I'm curious yeah. about the legal, I mean, I looked at your chart and it had the unaccompanied children. I mean, that just sent a shiver up my spine. I mean, it, and there's you no know, coffee oasis is big here, but I'm just curious about the legal issues for these kids. Are they emancipated? Do they have to go through a program? And there's so many things you can't do if you're under 18 or how that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a big thing that Coffee Oasis kind of is a liaison for and how these kids stand up? Yes. Yep. Um, and emancipation, actually, it's it's a long process and the, it's not actually easy to get. It's really got to be specific circumstances. Um, you can't just say, because I knew a young woman and so she had a parent, but the parent refused to do the pass -up. And because she was not emancipated, she couldn't go to, she couldn't get financial aid because they're just mom released. Mm -hmm. She couldn't be in the state, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. But might have been a savings. Mm -hmm. Financial aid is really debt. So people need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Coffee Oasis is the, the biggest um, place that's helping um, youth that are unaccompanied. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like there's a lot of things that they can't legally do because they're not of age of 18. Um, and yet the shelter is always full, mm -hmm. um, both here in Kitsap and Pierce County. Um, and there's a lot of youth, um, a lot of youth that are experiencing, um, leaving the home because of their gender or not being accepted because of their gender. Um, I think that is a, what a lot of the youth are facing that right now, I know in Pierce County, a lot of the youth that are living at the shelter are um, in transition of gender or um, just not getting along with their family. So they leave. Um, so the, the ultimate goal always is to find family reunification or another family member that they can stay with or friend. Um, but yeah. I did some watching TV, it was on your legislative review, but apparently there is a law that they're trying to get that that allows kids under 18 to get some sort of uh, identification, proper identification, so they can do some things where, you know, so anyway, I, yeah, if they've been a mystery, no, no, just so that, so that, because generally if you don't have a driver's license and many kids uh, don't get that, so mm -hmm. it's, it's allowing them to find ways to get some sort of formal Washington State Oh, I see. ID so okay. that they can do some things under the age of 18 or mm -hmm. after 18 without a driver's license. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. just reminded me when you said that. Yeah, kind of yeah I, one of the first things that they do when kids come to the shelter is like gathering all um, bike birth certificate, um, getting an ID. Um, getting them a health insurance card, all of those important documents, like that's like number one on the goal list. And then once they get all of those things, you know, making sure that they're enrolled in school, maybe get a job and then really working on housing because uh, their window is 150 days stay. 
for the shelter. So um, the youth can exit and then come back if it's open or they can be on the waiting list. But um, 150 day stay is what Coffee Oasis offers. So their shelter here, here. Mm -hmm. is a, it's residential. It's not just a day. Yeah, do they actually have people's staying? 150 days, yep. Yeah. And those locations are, you know, not known for good reason, right? Because I just think of Coffee Oasis as the 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 store, the shop where, you know, they're oh I've been I, there. I mean yeah. I had and some stuff. I had we had exchange students and these boys came from Europe with lots of expensive these are wealthy families and the boys would have outgrown all their clothes. I would take a big bag of like European, you know, soccer shirts and amazing clothes. Mm. To, and they just I just went right up there. They just told me to go upstairs. And, Okay. Yeah, it's on the back secret. side upstairs. Yeah, it's, it's, not, not, it's not a secret. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. I don't okay. think they, yeah. we, the league has gone and done, you know, just talked about voting for with the kids. Mm -hmm. And we've been allowed okay. to do I that. Think we were bed to not very many. I think 12. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting that jobs joining that. Mm -hmm. We'll start going back to the places they've asked us to come. Nice. See if kids want to talk about yeah. civics and the importance of their vote. So we'll do that. That's empowering. And I think they're always looking for um, mentors, um, you know, people to come alongside and be a supportive person for the youth outside of the shelter staff. Um, that's a huge part of you know, what we talk about a lot with the case manager is like, what other supportive people do they have in their lives outside of school, outside of the shelter staff? Because the shelter staff are only going to be in their lives for a, a period of time. So what are the other supports? Um, and I did want to mention Robin Carson. She works out of this building. Um, our team just met with her right before winter break, and she um, got a grant to start Empowering Youth Mentorship Program. Um, ages serving ages eight to 21. Um, and she is hoping to grow this mentorship program in this area for kids in our schools. Um, they, she will train you. She'll go through a training. There's all these, you know, you have to get background checked and all the things, um, I can give you the website. I can send it to you. Um, and then she would match you with a student or a, or a youth or a young adult that would be um, the same gender and maybe some similar things you like to do. Like if you're an outside person, the youth is an outside person and match, you know, try to have some commonality, but um, that's something that we really want to build in our schools, um, um, eight to 21. And where does she work? Is she works out of this building. United Way. Oh, yep, United Way. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. United Way. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, so that's my email. If you have specific questions, um, we should work on a centralized place to put needs. I will bring that back to our team and see what we can, we can do. Um, I know social media is a big one that people use, Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. But I've deleted all my social media, and that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um. <laughs> But um, Sarah Seipel, I'm Sarah Catherine. I go by Katie. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, guys.